In my hands, I have the safest helmet ever made, but arguably the most hated. This is the Vices O2 Trench. Now, I've been posting about this helmet on my Instagram ever since it came out, and this is the most common response. <laughs> the majority of people that see this helmet hate the way it looks, and I get it, it is definitely a little bit different looking. But in the last two years, it's starting to gain traction in the NFL, and as these pros put their safety before their swag, I think it's gonna start to trickle down more to lower levels. Let's break down why guys are starting to change. To start, this is very similar to the Vices O2 helmet. One of the ways it is different is that the Vices O2 is available in medium, large, and extra large. However, the Vices O2 trench is only available in large and extra large. The reasoning behind that is only bigger guys should be wearing this helmet, so chances are there shouldn't be a guy that is a medium wearing this. First, let's look at all the technology on the inside of this helmet, and then we'll talk about why you're really here. So this helmet has four layers of protection, starting with the deformable outer shell here. As you can see, this helmet has a lot of bend and a lot of play to it. And the point of this is it actually acts more like a car bumper than it does a traditional football helmet. See, a normal helmet like a Riddell Speed Flex is made to absorb all the impact that it gets. And it doesn't really focus as much on the shell, but it focuses more on the padding on the inside to absorb that impact. So this helmet actually works better at higher impact collisions because it allows it to disperse more of the force first before absorbing it with the padding on the inside. The next layer on the inside is gonna be the Reflex 2.0. Now this is a layer beneath the deformable shell and it's a bunch of leverage buckling structures. Now these columns buckle when force is applied and helps to absorb contact along with the outer shell. Inside of that is gonna be the reinforced inner shell that goes up against the Reflex 2.0 and also gives the next layer a place to attach to. Now the final layer on the inside are gonna be these. These are gonna be your Delta Pods. Now what makes this unique is this is all the padding on the inside and there's no air inside this helmet. As you can see, we have no bladders on the top, sides, or anywhere. The way you get a custom fit is when you actually buy your helmet, you get a bunch of these Delta Pods in a bunch of different thicknesses, and then you can put them anywhere inside the helmet to give it that custom fit. If you need a little more room in the back, you pop this one out and you put a thinner one in. The other nice thing is these are the same shape everywhere inside the helmet. It's just a bunch of them in here, which means that you don't have to remember everywhere that you put a pad. You can just take one out of the cheek and you can put it on top of your head. No big deal. Now these things are super comfortable, super spongy, and without any fabric, it is really easy to clean these as well. Now the only difference between the large and extra large is there's actually one more Delta pod in the back of the helmet on the XL. Now it is gonna take you a bit to dial in the fit for yourself and make sure you have all the pads exactly where you want them. But once you do, the fit is comparable to something like Riddell Precision Fit, where it's custom fit to your head. And I mean, it should be, it's basically the same price. Honestly, this is by far one of the most comfortable helmets I've ever put on. Like seriously, it feels amazing. Now, everything we've talked about so far is the exact same on the Vices O2 and the O2 Trench because they are the same shell and inside padding. But now let's get to why you're really here. It's gonna be this big, sexy bumper on the front. Now, this thing doesn't actually have a name. They just basically call it the third-party attachment, but because the helmet is a trench, we'll call it the trench. Now, this piece serves to act exactly like the outer shell, except just a little bit sooner and a little bit better. The purpose of this attachment is made for high impact, low velocity collisions. So when you have two O-linemen going at each other, they're not going at really high speeds, as in it's very low velocity, but it's very high impact because of the amount of force generated by these two big bodies. This thing is made specifically to handle the impact created by that scenario. So if you are a receiver and a DB and you're running at each other at very high speeds, again, this is not made for that. Now, the cool thing about this for painting and maintenance and you know cleaning purposes, this entire trench piece is actually removable. All you have to do is pop out the two wings at the back, pop off these screws where the chin strap attaches to, take the quick release face mask off, and this entire thing pops off. And on the outside, it's the same deformable outer shell plastic, but then on the inside, it kind of has these little bubble things that absorb impact, the same way that like the reflex or the other systems on this foot. But it is important to note that you can't just like play lineman in the first half, pop this thing off, and then go play quarterback with an O2 in the second half, because the face mask attachment point is built into the trench, so you will need that on there to put a face mask back on. Now, based on the Virginia Tech helmet rating scale, we already know this is the safest helmet ever made. This is number one, and number two is gonna be the O2 without the trench attachment. But people with this helmet are not worried about how safe it is. They're worried about how it looks and then a couple other things that this trench might add. Number one thing people have talked about with this helmet is the weight. They're worried about how much this thing weighs because it does look a lot bigger. And honestly, it really doesn't weigh that much more. This here with the trench is 4.7 pounds, which is slightly heavier than a Riddell Speed Flex and a Shut F7 BTD. If you don't have the trench attachment, it's 4.4 pounds. So this uh, trench attachment here only adds 0.3 pounds which means it doesn't really change the center of gravity with the helmet. So it's not going to put any strain on your neck from like pulling it forward, which is good. This is the first helmet to actually have a third party attachment on a helmet that is removable and kind of interchangeable by, by position. I do see other helmet manufacturers doing something similar in the future. I think it would be cool if other helmets had a skill position helmet, a third party attachment that's slightly smaller for linebackers, and then a little bit bigger one for linemen. I think it is a really cool way to actually have more custom helmets and more position specific builds for safety purposes. But here's the big thing. 
it's gonna be the style. What do you want me to say? Yes, on your head, this thing looks goofy. I can't deny that. When you look at it from the side, it looks crazy. We get the Power Ranger, we get Halo, we get Egghead, we get a bunch of different things, right? But at no point is Vices coming out and trying to say, hey, this thing doesn't look goofy, right? The entire purpose of this is going to be safety first. And honestly, I think that's what happened with George Kittle. See, last year, George Kittle was in a Riddell speed flex and he was a very important component of the pass offense by the 49ers. But this year, his focus has been a lot more on run blocking, especially with, since Trent Williams went out. Now, personally, I think ever since his focus has been more on run blocking and not as much about catching the ball, I think Nick Bosa, who's also in this helmet, talked to him and said, hey, you might want to check out this. It might be a little bit better for your position. At the end of the day, George Kittle's an alpha, Nick Bosa is an alpha, and they're gonna listen to each other, and that's probably gonna trickle down from there to other guys on the team. And as some of these bigger names adopt this helmet for even different positions, because like I said, George Kittle's the first skill position guy to wear the trench helmet, I do think it is gonna go to more guys at the NFL, and then from there it will trickle down to all levels of football, like everything else. Now the good news is, all the face mask options for this helmet are really cool. There's not one of the designs I don't like for the skill position or the lineman. And the nice thing is, if you do have a face mask on your O2, it does fit on your trench as well. Again, it's the same style. Now, if you're wondering what face mask I technically have here, I have an SC223E, which means it's basically a stainless steel face mask. E is for the eye guards and the 223 is gonna be the more closed up style on here. Technically, the S would be for stainless steel, but mine is actually a titanium version, which makes it a lot lighter. This is also not a production colorway that anyone can get. It's like a pearl orange red that was kind of custom made for, I don't know if it's for a all American bowl or something else they had left over that they gave to me. But basically this is a specific one that really no one else can get. Perks. We got one more thing to talk about this and that's gonna be the price. Now, if you do want the trench version of this helmet, it's around 900 to $1,000, depending on where you're looking at, which is around, I think $100 more than the O2 without the third party trench attachment. Now, the easy thing I could say here is you can't put a price on safety, but technically you can. I know in high school, I wouldn't have been able to afford this helmet for myself. So I understand everyone does have their limits when it comes to what they're willing to spend to gain like a little bit more safety than something else. Now, I think part of the problem of why people look at this as such an expensive helmet is they're comparing it to the actually wrong models. See, the problem is that this helmet is commercially available at the thousand dollar price point. Whereas the ones that it's actually compared to as far as a safety standard go would be something like a Riddell Precision Fit or a Diamond, again, which is custom, or something like a Shut UR1 or UR2, which isn't even available to the public. Now those helmets run into the two to $3,000 and they're mostly for NFL players, where this one is only a thousand dollars. So technically with the other helmets it's actually trying to compete against for basically custom fit safest helmets on the market, it's actually a lot cheaper than what Riddell or Shut is putting out. So if you look at it from that perspective, it's actually really affordable. The problem is it's commercially available like other models from Riddell, like their Speedflex and the Shut VTD. Those ones are around the $500 mark. Now again, they're not the same level of safety that this one has. So yes, it's a lot safer than those helmets, but it's also a lot more expensive. The other thing with this helmet you do have to consider, because I do want this video to last a long time, is I do see the prices of these Vices helmets going down in the future. The main reason would be Vices actually recently went bankrupt because they couldn't afford to make these anymore because it's so expensive to start up a new helmet brand. But they were actually recently bought by Shut, which means they will be able to re reproduce more in the future. The nice thing is when you're working with a big company like Shut, they can get in a lot more purchase orders, which means it'll get the cost to produce an item down, which means as the company grows, it should get cheaper cheaper for the consumer in the coming years. So I would like to see this helmet with its level of safety get down from like the thousand to maybe the eight or $600 mark. Again, big dreams, but we'll see what happens. So what's my verdict on this thing? My verdict would be to stay patient. I think you stay patient from a price perspective because I think over time the price of this thing is gonna go down and get a little bit more affordable for everyone. I think you also stay patient because more NFL guys will be wearing this and that will make it more acceptable for some of the high school and D1 players to put on this and not feel like they're you know a big goofball. And I think at the end of the day, in a couple of years, more people are gonna be putting their safety before their swag. So I do think this will be more common in a couple of years to either get commercially or be worn by your favorite players as well. That's all I got. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. We are working so hard to put out content every single day for you guys. So make sure you're subscribed, like this video and comment what you wanna see next. I'll catch you next time.